Megan everyone. Hope you're having a good Easter holiday and enjoying a bit of a break and hopefully enjoying some of the nice weather we're having. Um, that's if you can get out. So, back to the creakers. But I dropped the book. Uh, so, Lucy's just got back from the Woleb. Very strange place where everything seems a bit backwards and upside down. And she's just found Norman. Probably is about to tell him all about it. So, chapter nine, the plan. Blimey, Norman gawped as Lucy tried to explain about the backwards world beneath their beds. So you think that where our parents are, it's the Woleb? Yes, Lucy said, that's what the Creeker said. They snatched them and they want your dad's jacket. Uh huh. I have no idea why though. And they're coming back to snatch you tonight. Lucy looked at him again and nodded. Blimey, Norman said again. Double blimey, Lucy added with a worried frown. Norman rustled up a scout's breakfast of eggs, beans, on, on his camping stove. By the time they'd sat down to eat, they were both so full of worry that neither of them had much appetite. And there's Norman cooking up the breakfast. Frying his eggs. I'm not sure about you, but I've never flipped eggs before. <sighs> Shall we go for a walk, clear our heads? Norman suggested, noticing that Lucy hadn't eaten a single baked bean. Lucy smiled and nodded again. But as they wandered into the street, it soon became clear that Whiffington no longer looked like Whiffington at all. The kids had been left alone for approximately 49 hours and things had started to get a little... Well, let's take a look at some of the chaos Lucy and Norman saw. Billy Noshling had put his head inside the crisp vending machine and munched all 200 packets of crisp, even the prawn cocktail flavoured ones. Unfortunately, he now couldn't get his head back out again. The only way to free him would be to put some money in the machine and buy him. But since there were no grown-ups around to give the children pocket money... There was no choice but to stay there. Jackson Gilly had released three sharks into the public swimming pool and tried opening a small aquarium. However, he had forgotten to mention the sharks to the children who were using the pool at the time. Oops. The whole street had its pavements replaced with trampolines and the leisure centre had its trampolines replaced with pavement. Neither arrangement worked out very well. Four children had accidentally flushed themselves down the toilet, clogged the drain pipes for the rest of the town. And worst of all, Scrummy McScrudel's sweets and stuff had run out of sweets and now only had stuff. And there's the town. That's what their street looks like. I think I'd quite like to have a street of trampolines. Definitely make getting to school a bit more fun. We need to do something, Lucy said, looking around the chaos surrounding them, when suddenly they heard a whisper. It's her, hissed the voice excitedly. It's the girl who knows what to do. There was a rustle and the leaves of the trees above them had parted. A group of children emerged, climbing down from the branches like wild monkeys. Lucy counted six of them, all so dirty, and their clothes so ragged and torn that it was difficult to tell if they were boys or girls. As they swung down from the branches to the pavement, one of the wild children nudged another one and went, Go ask her, go on. There they all are, coming down from the trees. Lucy and Norman below. That looks quite fun, actually, climbing up that tree. It's a good tree climbing tree. The boys shoved closer to Norman, shuffled closer to Lucy and Norman. We want our mummies and daddies back, please. Please help us, the filthy child said, his wild eyes suddenly large and worried, so that he looked a bit like a sad kitten. Food, another one whispered while crouching beside the tree. And food, added the first child. Do you have any food? Lucy looked at Norman. Things had turned from bad to worse. It wasn't fun anymore. The novelty of having no grown-ups around was wearing off fast. These kids were tired and hungry. I've got some eggs and beans you can have, offered Norman. They're still in the pan in my... 
before Norman could even finish his sentence, the wild children had scurried off down the street in the direction of Norman and Lucy had come from, in search of his food. Okay, you were right, we need to do something, Norman admitted, but what? I need to go to the Wayleb and get the grown-ups back, said Lucy, staring after the wild kids. I was afraid you were going to say that, said Norman, wiping the sweat from his forehead with his yellow sc scalp scarf. But how are you going to do it? You don't know your way around the Wayleb. You've got no idea how big it is, where it leads or whereabouts they're keeping our parents. It's impossible, he sighed. <sighs> Unless... Unless what? Lucy asked, hopefully. Unless we somehow manage to get one of those creakers to take us to the grown-ups. Norman gazed into the distance, deep in thought. Lucy grabbed his arm. Norman, that's brilliant! But how are we going to do it? What you doing? Squeaked Ella, annoying, hopping out suddenly from behind them, making them both jump. Ella! Norman gasped. Lucy cried. Have you been following us? Maybe, said Ella. Norman and Lucy looked at each other. How much did you hear? said Lucy. Only all of it, sang Ella in an awful, over-the-top operatic voice, flinging her arms around like a diva. I heard it all, I heard it all, 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 she wailed in a painful, screeching voice. Ella, you can't tell anyone what you heard, Lucy shouted, cupping her hand over Ella's mouth to shut her up. It's a secret. Oh, yuck, she licked my hand, she cried, snatching away from Ella's grinning mouth. Pert leaves. I'm six years old, Ella said with a dismissive wave of her hand. I know there's no such, thing, such things as monsters under the bed. Your silly stories don't scare me. Stories, right said Norman with a naughty little twinkle in his eye. Hey, Ella, if you're so brave, why don't you come to our ghost story sleepover tonight at Lucy's house? What? cried Lucy. Norman quickly shot her a look that said, play along. Yeah, right, I forgot, a sleepover. Lucy said, she realised what Norman was up to. She tried to, bit her lip and tried to hide a smile. Norman really wasn't so bad after all. It'll be fun, we'll stay out past midnight and everything, Norman added. Midnight? Really, come on, Norm. That's like so early. Millie Butkins was awake until 1am last night. you got to do better than that. Okay, fine, 1am, Norman agreed. Are you in? And I looked suspiciously at both of them for a moment, before shrugging her shoulders. If you throw in a full packet of marshmallows, then you can count me in. Deal, Norman said, and they shook hands. Ella skipped merrily off towards the tramp towards Trampoline Avenue, leaving Norman and Lucy alone. Two words, Norman said, as they watched Ella disappearing into the distance. Live bait. Okay. So a plan is being formed. We're going to use Ella somehow. So, we'll see what happens next time when we get to chapter 10, The Creeper Trap. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!